All right, now we're on to the color red. And we're going to start off with Armory Veteran. As long as Armory Veteran is equipped, it has Menace, 2 mana, 2 2. Seems kind of medium. I haven't really seen that many great equipment that's cheap to equip. There's like no Bone Splitter type things, or there's no like Pirate's Cutlass. Like, if there was a Pirate's Cutlass type effect, then we'd be talking a different thing. This was like one of the best cards in a previously aggressive format, which was Pirate's Cutlass. And when it enters the battlefield, plus uh, attach it to a pirate, which is a supported creature type. So, like, if there was an equipment that said enters the battlefield, attach it to a warrior or an orc or what have you that was in common, maybe. But I'm not seeing that. Uh, speaking of, boots of speed. A critical creature gets plus 1 0 in haste. This seems pretty good. Strictly better crystal slipper, right? Although Crystal Slipper was never used, so. Yeah, Crystal Slipper, strictly better version of Crystal Slipper. It is weird when you have a strictly better card than thr than a Throne of Eldraine card in your set. That's dangerous. <laughs> That's dangerous. If you were gonna, like, hey, let's make a new card and have a strictly better version of it. What set should we grab it from? Oh yeah, Throne of Eldraine. There aren't banned cards in that set. Um, this might be good. There's more payoffs for, our, like, Armory Veteran. I haven't really seen it, like, right? There weren't there that many cards in white. Brazen Dwarf. Whenever you roll one or more dice, it deals one damage to each opponent. This seems unplayable. It does not actually work the way you think it does with, uh, the Pixie Guide. So the Pixie Guide lets you roll one more die, but... This says straight up when you roll one or more dice. So you don't deal two damage if you have the basic guy and you only deal one. This card seems pretty medium minus. This seems worse than it. This this seems worse than just an armory veteran to me. I mean, there there was a card in the past called um There's been lots of cards that do this type of effect. But Reckless Fireweaver is a good one. Right, and Reckless Fire Reaver, I think, was you played it maybe like one out of ten times. Maybe one out of one out of eight times. You don't play it very often. And that was in Kaladesh, it was an artifact set. Same thing as Reckless Fire Reaver. Um Dragon's Fire. As an additional cost to cast a spell, you may reveal a dragon card from your hand or choose a dragon you control. Dragon's Fire deals damage, three damage to target creature or planeswalker. If you reveal a dragon card or chose a dragon, as you cast a spell, deals damage equal to the power of that card or creature card. Of that card or creature instead. Okay, got it. So if you have like if you have white dragon in your hand, you can reveal it when you cast this card and have this card deal four instead of three. Or if you have one in play. But two mana deal three. This card's great. It's an eight. Yeah. So weirdly enough. Weirdly enough. By the way, don't get don't get fooled. But these trickster tokens are one ones. So if you're on arena and you have Feywild trickster in play, arena will ask you if you'd like to deal damage equal to your one one dragon's power when you cast dragon's fire. Don't be fooled. Dueling rapier. One cost flash. Whenever it is the battlefield, attach a target creature you control. A quick creature gets plus two zero. Equip four. They printed this card before, haven't they? It was bad before, and I think it's bad now. I don't think I want anything to do with this. I mean, I guess you put it on the armory veteran to make a four power menace creature. Whatever. Siege. I I don't know. I don't remember. Um. Yeah, the free equip cost, like a four cost bone splitter is not enough for dual ring. It's not it's like not, not a real card. Yeah. There was uh I mean this card has been printed many times in the past, if I recall correctly. This is not the first time this thing has happened. Uh I mean actually let me just let me just look it up. Let me just look it up just to satisfy my own curiosity. Uh well there's Embercleave. Was it Grifter's Blade? Yeah, so there was Grifter's Blade, and it was ter it was Grifter Blade was terrible. 
and uh, shining armor slash paladin shields in the set. Wait, but shining armor actually gave vigilance, and that card was bad. And this new one doesn't even give vigilance. Holy moly! All right, it's a plus two zero trick. Yeah, it's a plus two zero trick with, with little upside. Yeah. Earth Gold Elemental enters the battlefield, roll a d20. Each player sacks a permanent, 1 through 9. Each opponent sacrifices a permanent, 10 through 19. 20. Each opponent sacrifices two permanents. This card seems pretty good. This card seems pretty good. I'm pretty happy to have this as my top end. Sack land is eh. Well, Almang, I'm going to do a little bit of a spoiler for you. Do a little bit of a spoiler for you, because this is another common. But. Th this card. So if you go hoarding Ogre into Earth Cult Elemental and your opponent has four lands in play and you make them sack a land on when they have four lands in play, that's devastating. That's like that's a pretty good effect to have. If you if you roll a twenty, it's just game over. Right? Five percent chance to just win the game. We both sack a land, who cares? Right? This 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 thing seems great. It seems great to me. Yeah, but Kita Kamimaru, it was it there was it Earth Cult Elemental's fault? I mean, it tried its hardest, right? This seems good to me. I'll put it as a six. Maybe you don't play more than one. I, this card seems really good to me though. Pharaoh does fireball. Deals five damage to target creature or planeswalker, roll a d20. One to nine, it deals two damage to your each player. Ten to twenty, it deals two damage to each opponent. Um Hmm. I guess the joke in D and D is that fireballs hit the hit yourself as with splash damage. I guess that's the joke. But yeah, you can kill yourself with this. This seems like much worse than Chandra's outrage. By by, it's worse than Chandra's outrage by quite a significant margin. But just this is a common they've reprinted like six times. Which was deal four, then deal two to them. This card can cause draws, which is kind of funny. But I don't like this card. I mean, it's instant speed at least. You'll probably play it and just be unhappy about it. It's better than minus 11, minus 11 by a pretty big margin. The black one. Yeah, Pigment Storm. It's better than Pigment Storm. Ooh, that was a sorcery. And that was like a barely played card. I I often did not play Pigment Storm when I had it. This thing. I often did not play this card. Yeah, this can hit Planeswalkers. All right, Goblin Javelinier. Haste. Whenever it becomes blocked, it deals one damage to a creature blocking it. No thing. I guess it's good with the Vorpal Blade. Oh, they can still just double block it though. Yeah. I don't, want to, I don't want anything to do with this card. Hasted 1-1, one, one, it's going to be played. Yeah, you shouldn't, but people are going to play it. You shouldn't play it. No, it's, it's a target creature blocking it, right? It's a target creature blocking it. I don't know. They, they've gone back and forth. There are some cards that, that trigger twice when you double block it, and just some that only trigger once. Gang of Elk triggers twice, if I recall, right? This is the one that always, like threw me for a loop this one whenever it becomes blocked deal it gets plus two plus two until for each creature. well the original text did not say that i think the original text just said it got plus two until plus two whenever it gets blocked yeah all right hoarding ogre attacks roll a d20 create a treasure token create two treasure tokens create three treasure tokens this card is really good it looks so innocuous this card is really good. It looks so innocuous. It's it's such huge upside. Such huge upside. This card. Uh, no, Synthetica. You'd rather just have a normal creature and not worry about a goblin. Like, you don't need to play Goblin Javelinier to make a Death Touch equipment good. You can just have a real creature instead. <laughs> like, play it on an Armory Veteran instead. Yeah, you can double spell on turn five or six with this. This card is really good. Play it. You'll be happy with it. I like that it always gives you at least one treasure. And more than half the time, it's better than that. 
50, it's 45% you make one treasure, 50% you make two, and then 5% you make three. Really good. Hobgoblin Captain. Two cost three, one whenever you, it attacks. If you attack with creatures of power six or greater this combat, it gains first strike until end of turn. This card is really good. Unlike... Unlike um, the Dwarf Hold Champion, which gets plus 2-0 when it's equipped. This one does not get blocked down by 1-1 Goblins from the dungeons. This card is really good. This is hard-hitting and tight-fitting. Like, if your opponent... Yeah, the original text of L was whenever a creature blocks it, yeah. And that, that one works that if you double block it, it gets... You get plus two, plus two for each. Yeah, but Hobgoblin... Yeah, if you pump this fellow, then he gets first strike himself. Like, a two cost, three, one first strike like was Porcelain Legionnaire, right? This fellow is, like, pretty close to Porcelain Legionnaire. If your opponent opens up with Hobgoblin Captain into Hobgoblin Captain on the play, you are just... You can't block for the rest of the game. Like, you just... You just die. <laughs> And you'd have to look up the rulings for pack tactics when the when the set when the set FAQ comes out. So if you attack with two hobgoblin captains and your opponent throws a fireball at one when the ability is on the stack, I'm not sure what happens to the one that lives, whether it still triggers and happens. Um You're gonna have to look that up. And I, I think you do still get it. The way it's worded, because it says, if you attack with creatures with total power 6 or greater this combat. So, after you've attacked and put the abilities in the stack, you have attacked with power 6 or greater creatures this combat. Now, I don't know if that's true if your opponent plays Eye of the Beholder. If you attack with two hob Hobgoblin Captains and your opponent Eyes of the Beholder, one of them, I don't know if the other one will still get first strike. you have to look at the FAQ for that. Yeah, you have to look at the release notes for that. So, you should definitely look that up if you're if you're if you're watching this into the future, uh, and see what the ruling is on pack tactics and something dying before it resolves. But this card's good. Deals two damage to any target. Create treasure token. This card's good. Love it. Reminds me a lot of Idiot's inspiration. Love the artwork too. I love that the little brain, the little brain with like little legs is still in the bottom right. <laughs> that fellow that's in, uh, that's right here. This, <laughs> this fellow's there. Just chilling. Yeah, this, this hoarding ogre, if unchecked, leads to like really, because there's tons of mana sinks in the format, so you always, those treasures are. Like, I think creating creating two or three treasures is almost like drawing a card, because you're going to be able to cash those in for some sort of effect. Whenever Jaded Cell Sword enters the battlefield, if mana from a treasure is meant to cast it against First Strike and Haste, this card looks really good. That's a pretty awesome payoff. If you sack it from a treasure. That's that's pretty hard-hitting and fight-fitting. Tight, Yeah, fight-fitting. Well, also fight-fitting. He hits you pretty hard. And it's a dragon. You're right. It's a dragon that you can reveal to your dragon's fire to deal four. I even think about that. Or it's a dragon you can reveal to uh, your dragon's disciple to become a two four. I didn't know there were common dragons at low mana costs. Okay. Uh, but yeah, this, this card seems good. I like it. So this is the only red. Co this is the only red common venture card. Vent there are 33 venture cards, and red doesn't get to do it except for this. And one rare. So put a counter on target creature. That creature gains haste until the turn and can't be blocked by walls. Venture into the dungeon. Um, you think it's insane? No, it doesn't seem insane to me. Feels like, feels like Battle Growth Plus. Yeah, Hammerhand-esque. Which was never... Never a thing I was really... Interested in. Got a voice was okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I think this is more closer to a four. I think I think kicking the door is worse than dueling rapier. 
I think it's worse than this. So I think it's probably a three. When there's a battlefield, choose one. Destroy a target artifact or create a treasure token. This card seems okay to main deck. Seems like a filler card. Or a cyborg card. But I just, this card is not embarrassing. Flav very flavorful card. I like that these like hate cards have alternatives that are not just their, their hate hate effect. Price of loyalty. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn. If mana from a treasure is meant to cast a spell, that creature gets plus two until the turn. Okay, so I've talked about this many times over the course of this set review. I'm going to reiterate it here. This card is a lot better than it looks. Why? Because of Tomb of Annihilation, the Sandfall Cell. Where each player loses two life unless they sacrifice an artifact, a creature, or a land. So you can take their creature and then venture and sacrifice that creature. Or if your opponent, you can just take your opponent's Wanty Fangblade. Or if you have one of your own, you can just take it or have one of your own attack, venture, and then with the venture trigger, use that to get to the caverns and sacrifice whatever you just took. So. It is actually a bit better than it looks because the combo of it sacrificing your creature can be done with any color combination, not just black. And black also has the, uh, the Sepulchral Gruel, which it obviously is obviously a good combo with. And in addition, in addition, Act of Treason is better in this set. There's also Alter's Reap, right? Whatever the Alter's Reap is called. In addition... The creature, if it has any of your opponent's equipment on it, you get those two. Well, uh, well, they stay attached to the creature. You don't get them. You can't, like, move them to your creatures. But they stay attached to the creature. So if they have, like, if they have, um, like, a Delver's Torch, well, that's actually bad if they have a Delver's Torch. Because they, they will actually venture, not you. It's just their card. It's their Delver's Torch, not yours. That's actually really bad. That's bad news. <laughs> it's really bad against Delver's Torch. Um, but if they have like a plus two maze or whatever, then you can slap them with it. it stays attached to your card, to the card that you took until the turn. But I, I think this card is, is better than After Treasons have been in the past. I don't know if it's a card that I'm going to be main decking very often, but I'm sure I'm going to lose to it. Swarming Goblins. When Swarming Goblins enters the battlefield, roll a d20. 1 to 9 create a 1 1 Goblin token. 10 to 19 create 2 of those tokens. 20 create 3 of this. This card seems pretty good. This is Army in a Can, yeah. More than half the time you're making 2, two plus tokens. I like it. It's especially good with clone effects. Like, uh, if you have, like, Trickster's Talisman. It's really good with Trickster's Talisman, too. Yeah, 5 out of 5 for is. I'm, I'm a big fan of those. I think you're probably going to play these a lot of the time. Unexpected Windfall. An additional cost to cast this card. Cast this spell. Just got a card. Draw two cards and create two treasure tokens. So, this card is really good. Why? Well, there was a card called Pirate's Pillage in the past... It was a sorcery that was draw two cards. It was discard a card, draw two cards, and create. This card was bananas. And this is a common version of Pirate's Pillage. A little bit harder to cast, a double red, but it's an instant speed. This card's really good. Like creating a treasure is almost, it's almost worth two treasures, it's almost worth a card. So it's, it's like discard a card, draw three a lot of the time. It's really good. When you're coming in your turn, target creature you control gets plus no until the turn. Wow, this card is good. Wow, this card is good. Like, this is just, red doesn't get three mana three threes. And this is way better than a three mana three three. It has like quasi haste too, because you can like pump your two drop that you played on turn two. This card is so good. It's like a combat professor. Except it's red. I mean, if it gave haste, it would be literally the red combat professor. But it doesn't give haste. Yeah. So combat professor was on 9 out of 10 in the last set. 
in Strixhaven. So it comes from a pretty good pedigree. I like it. This card's good. You came to the Null Camp. Two mana, up to two dark creatures can't block this turn. Two mana, target creature plus three plus one until the turn. The card's fine. I, d I don't like these type of, I don't like combat tricks, but I like falters. The card's fine. I'm not gonna play it. Other people, you can play it and it'll be fine. Barbarian class. If you would roll one or more dice, instead roll the many dice plus one. Okay, so it's just like grant an advantage. It's just like the pixie. The pixie guide. Okay. And then whenever you roll one or more dice, target creature you, you control gets plus two O and gains menace until end of turn. Okay. Creatures you control have haste. It's pretty good with this uh, hoarding ogre. It turns the hoarding ogre into a, a five three menace that makes treasures. That's pretty awesome. Makes a lot of treasures, but you get to re-roll. Get to rebuy. Yeah, and there are some instant speed ways to to make dice. This is like a red blue card, right? This is a red blue card because. The Barbarian class can be replaced, like the fact that you paid one mana on just the that can be replaced with either of the blue four drops, Contract, Other Plane, or Jin Windseeker, right? Like scrying additional amount. Like scrying an extra blank to the bottom. No, it says whenever you roll one or more dice. So if you roll two dice, you don't get plus four oh. Every instance every instance of you rolling dice, you get plus two oh. But not if you if you Librarian class has a stack with itself, it doesn't you don't get plus four oh. I like the card. But I feel like if you're not playing blue, you you're not playing this card. It's like a red blue card only. This looks like a three or a four to me. Feels like a red blue card only. Looks fun, but I don't as much as rolling dice is fun. Goblins you control get plus one on and gain haste until the turn. Whenever it attacks, if you get attacked with creature with power six or greater, this combat create a one-one red goblin creature that's tapped and attacking. Wow, this card is good. This is hard hitting. You can pump pre-combat to get over the hump of six to get the one-one tapped attacker, or if you already got six, then you just make the goblin token and you can pump both the goblin token and this. This card is so good. Goblin, do you control get plus one and gain haste until the turn? No, I don't. I think if you pump it and then attack and get the token, the, the token is a one one. You have to look at this. You have to look at the release notes. You have to look at the release notes for sure. But I, I would assume that the, the one one that you create does not get the bonus. Yeah, it pumps itself and it pumps the tokens. And goblins is a supporter creature type, it's just hobgoblins in the set. This card is really good. Yeah, it's like a two-drop army maker that also fire breathes. This is really good. It just needs a little bit of help to get over the hump. It's at least an eight, if not a nine. Yeah, it can give itself haste. It's also just a four mana three two haste. There's a back door. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a really versatile card. It's gonna be a really good card to see to play with. But at the end of the day, it is a two two. If your opponent just has like a two three, it's just gonna it's gonna be trading with it. So, Burning Hands deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker. If that permanent is green, it deals six instead. This card sucks. They tried this before. This card is worse than the old version. There's Parch, but this could hit. Pl this could hit the face. Parch could hit the face, so it was like reasonable. What is up with these hate cards? I feel like they completely missed the mark. But the white one is unpl the white one sucks. Divine Smite. This sucks. The the black one sucks. Raven Field, man. Like what these these cards are bad. This kills Nissa? Oh, it kills Oko. Is that the joke? Is this how far in advance magic was? This kills Oko? Is this why they made it? All right. Two cost shock. I don't know. Maybe it's a four. 
There's a lot of 3-2s in this format and 2-2s. Maybe this is actually closer to a 5 and you just always play this card and just be unhappy with it. That might be the case. There's just way too many 3-cost three 3-2s three to draw cards on hit. You just gotta kill them. Kills Uro. Oh yeah, it sure does. It sure does. <laughs> Whenever Chaos Channeler attacks, roll a d20. Exile the top card of your library. You may play it this turn. Exile the top two. Exile the top three. This card is phenomenal. This is a nine. This card's... This is quite the Sunny P. If you're not familiar with what's old Sunny P. This is what we call two... Two and two pips, four threes with abilities. Old, old Summy P. <laughs> That's it's quite the Summy P. That card's good. I mean, uh, there was wasn't this a rare? There was a like wasn't there like a four mana three four that whenever it attacks or was targeted, exile the top two tectonic giant. Yeah, Tectonic Giant. This was like a nine out of ten. It was this was a rare. He's pretty close. It was obviously worse. Maybe it's an eight. Maybe I'm overestimating it because there are a lot of three twos. Maybe I'm overestimating this card. Yeah, you're right. Tectonic Giant goes until the end of the end of your next turn. But Tectonic Giant can only can only get one card. This can get two or three. Yeah, Tuscari Firewalker was actually not that good, though, in the previous, in, in call time. I thought it would be really insane when I did the set review. This I actually turned out to be pretty pretty medium, Tuscari Firewalker. This is a pretty aggressively medium card. So maybe this is more of a medium card. Ardent Dustspeaker was great. You're right. Ardent Dustspeaker was actually in, in call time. You're right. It was great. And actually, it had a condition... And it cost five. You're right. This thing? Yeah, this was in the previous set. You're right, it probably is a nine. I don't think I ever lost when I attacked Iron Dust Speaker and it hit. I think you're probably right. Critical hit. Whenever you roll a natural Tony, return it from your graveyard to your hand. Two mana, target creature gains double strike. I think this card's bad. It's essentially plus 3-0. I'm not going to play it. I'm going to lose to it. It's fine. 5% chance of whenever you roll a die, you get a return it to your hand. It's kind of whatever to me. Like, I almost thought that this would be a card that you would roll a die on where it would gain trampled somehow, but no. It does combo with the Ophidians, and it does come somewhat, maybe. I think it's probably pretty bad. Goblin Morning Star. Oops. Get out of your dust speaker. Equip creature gets plus one oh and has trample. Equip two. When he enters the battlefield, roll a d20. One to nine, create a one one red goblin. Ten to twenty. Create a one one goblin and attach it to this. So this is baseline equipment plus one one. And then sometimes it's also a two one. Like sometimes it's a goblin plug here with trample with the equipment that it leaves behind. This card seems pretty good. Plus, the trample is a pretty awesome effect to have in an equipment. It's at least a six. Might be it. Might be actually closer to an eight. Trample is really, really good. Yeah, because you can put trample. You can put trample on uh, like one T Fang Blade, and it always ventures. Right, Death Touch and Trample work really well. There's a lot of on hit cards. This might be pretty good. Yeah, plus one oh and trample is just a really powerful effect to have. It's a rancor like effect. Yeah, it is really good with that touch for sure. I'm willing to believe this might be closer to a seven, but I'll reserve judgment. Hulking bugbear, three mana, three three haste. Is that good? In the past, in the last sets, there were been three mana, three two haste, and they've been unplayable. I don't even know this is good. Like, I don't even think it's as good as um, Valor Singer. I think it's worse than this. This is like quasi haste, but you can like put it on one of your other creatures and one power haste it through. I don't like this card. It is a goblin. 
I think it's worse. Than, I think it's worse than the common. If you don't play this, it's fine. Is it better than Goblin Morningstar? I'm not sure. They're... Goblin Morningstar gives you lots of reach. This one kind of hits them hard. Nah, I don't like. I don't like this card. Magic Missile. This spell can't be countered. Deal three damage among one, two, or three targets. So you can go one, 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 two, two, one, three. Arc Lightning was a common in the past. It was pretty bananas. This card's probably pretty good too. Is it better than Dragon's Fire? I don't think it is. Yeah, Arc Lightning was a common in the past, by the way. This is Arc Lightning. I guess this can go to face, so it's probably an Avid's can go to face. All right, six mana, four four. When it deals enters the battlefield, it deals four damage to each opponent. So it's just volcanic dragon. Volcanic dragon was a bomb in previous sets. Oh, there's volcanic dragon four six mana four four haste. This is better than that. Well, it's better than volcanic dragon because you're guaranteed the four damage and it's untapped, so you can block with it, right? And they can't just like instant speed terminate it. So it's better than Volcanic Dragon, and Volcanic Dragon has been a bomb in the past. This effect is way better than it looks. <laughs> it looks kind of mopey, but this this fellow is not a joke. Having this much burn in your deck is not a joke. Especially with Tomb of Annihilation being a dungeon. Like with this with this Tomb of Annihilation being a dungeon when your opponent's at like 15 life. This, this fellow is just not a joke. It's at least a 7. It might be an 8. I'll put it as an 8. Yeah, if you can haste it, it's even better, even more brutal. Rust Monster. Sacrifice an artifact. Plus 2 and... Oh, it has first strike. 3 cost 2 and first strike. This card is really good. I mean... Unexpected Windfall is a common. Here's what's going to happen... You play Rust Monster on turn three, and you attack with it turn four. Your opponent can't even block it because you, you're you. If you have four mana open, you're bluffing having the unexpected windfall. Just the fact that unexpected windfall exists in the format. And what if you go, good lord? What if you go Rust Monster into Hoarding Ogre? Your opponent is dead. They're just they're ice cold. <laughs> they can't they can never block this guy down. Yes, yeah, this, this guy's great. Tiger Tribe Hunter. Five mana four four trample. Whenever it attacks, if you attack with a creature's total power six or greater is combat, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do Tiger Tribe Hunter deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to target creature. This card seems pretty good. You just you just chuck things. That you can't he can't hit their face, but he does have trample. It's another sack outlet. You're right. Good call. Another sack outlet for your active trees and your price of loyalty. Oh yeah, totally. Oh, that's sick. It's like a you build your own grab the reins. If you're not familiar with grab the reins, well, be happy you didn't play back then in Magic. Because this is the card. Grab the Reins was the card that was the 10 out of 10 uncommon in that format. Grab the Reins was not a, not a real magic card. Yeah. This was the... Res it was a, the red uncommon that, like, it doesn't matter what your life total was. Your opponent can just kill you if they drew Grab the Reins. It was so stupid. Yeah, also, by the way, instant speed, gain control of target creature. Yeah. By the way. Yeah, grab the range was not a real. I don't want nightmares from that. I don't want to. I don't even want to remember that format. Let's 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 wipe that one from our memory right there. All right, Tiger Tribe Hunter, really good with active treason. <laughs> this card's good. I like it. I like that you can sack the creature that's not attacking. Like, you have, like, a 4-4 four, four and a 2-2, two, two, and you can, like, your opponent plays a 4-4, four, four, and then you can, like, pay a 4-4, four, four, and then you can attack with your 4-4 four, four and 2-2, two, two, and then you can sack your 4-4 four, four that's not attacking to, like, blow up the creature that's going to be blocking and hit them for 6. I like this card a lot. 
Break their chains, destroy target artifacts. Okay. Interrogate them. Exile the top three cards of target opponent's library. Choose one of them until the end of your next turn. You may play that card, and you may spend mana as though or mana of any color to cast it. Is this good? Is this like an anticipate a limited a limited time anticipate of your opponent's deck? I feel like I'm gonna be hitting land off this most of the time. I do like the three deck damage. I do like three deck damage. I like it to shatter that you can like cycle. I think it's a cool card. I don't think it's good. Just an anticipate, right? Is hitting land bad? No, I think I think you, until the end of your next turn you may play that card. So if it's a land, you can play it. No, you can hit lands off of it. I don't think it's great. It's good if the opponent scries top. Yeah, maybe. But oftentimes when your opponent scries top, they're looking for a land, right? I don't know. I don't like it. I don't think it's good. It is a red anticipate. So if you were looking, if you're in the mood for an anticipate, maybe this is up your alley. I don't like it though. And then finally we have, sorry, I didn't scroll this thing down earlier. Um, you see a pair of goblins. Creatures you control get plus two until end of turn. Befriend them, create two one one red goblin tokens. This is unexpected. This doesn't seem bad. This is like one of the best of these types of effects they've ever made. Yeah, Rally the Peasants, Dragon Fodder Split card seems okay. Yeah. This is probably good. I like that it can turn on ta pack tactics really easily. And I like that there's a lot of 3-2s. There's a lot of 2-2s two and 3-2s that have on-hit effects that this trades with, right? This card's good. I'll put it as a 5. I don't think every deck's going to play it. But I don't... I don't, it's not embarrassing to play this card at all. Yeah, it's, it's good in multiples because you make the one on ones and then you can trumpet blast them, right? Yeah. So I, I don't know what this card does. I'm gonna read it to you. Four mana, three two. Whenever Delino Wild Mage attacks, choose target creature you control, then roll a d20. Create a tapped and attacking token as a copy of that creature, except it's not legendary and it has exile this creature into combat. And then 15 to, that's on 1 to 14. And then 15 to 20, recruit one of those tokens and roll again. So I assume when it says create one of those tokens, it's referring to a tapped attacking non-legendary copy of target creature. Um, it is. Okay. I'm not sure what it means. Okay, so if I hit Delina, if I, if I play Delina and I attack and I choose Delina and I roll a 15, the token doesn't trigger, right? The token doesn't trigger the attack effect, so I don't get to, like, make a bunch of more tokens. Okay. Somebody who's smarter than me, I think Frey Carson likes this card. I think he wrote something about what the odds are of just killing your opponent when, when you have, like, a reroll effect, like if you have a Barbarian class in play. Or if you have like one of the the pixie guides, I assume if you have just barbarian, if you have just barbarian class, this might one shot somebody like pretty easily, because every time you roll, you also get plus two o. So I assume that every time you hit a four, every time you hit fifteen through twenty, you also get another plus instance of plus two a menace to put on something. So, yeah, it's, you always play it. The card's obviously great. The question is, how great is it? is it? Like, if you copy, if you copy the, so you don't get on a hit, on attack effect. So, you, for instance, if you copy the channeler, if you copy the channeler, you won't get the, uh, you won't get the on attack effect. But you do get coming to play effects. So if you copy Swarming Goblins, it's pretty bananas, right? Because every copy that you make also starts rolling to make more cop more tokens. Or or yeah, you target Fire Dragon. Like if you go turn four Delina and then you like have a treasure lying around and you and you hit that red dragon, they're just dead. 
<laughs> They're actually just dead. Yeah. They just explode into a puff of smoke. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to put this as a 9 just because it's so incredibly dangerous if it hits. Your opponent has to kill it or they just die in the spot, I feel. I've got one got Bandit Lord. I like Goblins you control get plus one plus one. One red tap. How about Goblin Damage Lord deals damage equal to the Goblin of Goblins that enter the battlefield under your control this turn to any target. That's a pretty good Goblin Lord. Would I splash for Delina? If I had the creatures that it combos with, yeah. If I had like Enter the Battlefield or, or creatures that just one shot the opponent. Oh, it's also a Red Elf. Oh, it's the only mono Red Elf. That might be true. Oh, it works with the blue on Tapper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're talking about Delina. If you have Delina and you target um, your three cost 2-2, two -two, Scion of Stygia. Yeah, that's pretty good. Or, but yeah, Hobble Goblin Bandit Lord also works really well with um, the Clever Conjurer. That's pretty good. This card's pretty... I don't know if you actually need that many goblins to make this good. Like, if you just have... You see a pair of goblins, you can, like, make a pair of tutus and then also shock something. This card seems fine. Yeah, there's also, like, that insane 2 cost 3 one hop goblin Captain. That just put, makes it a 4-2 for a strike, which is even better. Deals 8 damage divided as you choose among X target creatures and or planeswalkers. Okay, so it's 4 mana deal 8 to a creature. It's 5 mana deal 8 divided among 2 creatures. It's 6 mana deal 8 divided among 3 creatures and or planeswalkers. So it's just a 4 cost terminate. 5 cost kill 2 things. This is pretty good. This is probably a 9. It's 5 cost. It's, it's twin strike. Right? I mean, that's what it is. It's just, it's just Twin Strike. With with different modes of 4 and 6 mana. Triple Red, I don't think Triple Red's that hard to get because of the Treasure Makers. Because they just, they just have Hoarding hoarding Ogre, right? I mean, Hoarding Ogre alone does it for you. Minion of the Mighty. Menace, 1 cost, 0, 1. Whenever it attacks, if you attack with creatures with total power 6 or greater this combat, you may put a dragon creature card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Man, it's set so good with Red Dragon. They just explode. Red Dragon is actually just so good. Maybe Red Dragon's a 9. Red Dragon is just so good. It actually probably is. I'm going to make Red Dragon a 9, using my executive decision. Um, I don't think this card's very good, though. I, don't, I mean, the, the 4 mana 4, th the, the Jaded Cell Sword is also a dragon. So you can put like that 4-3 into play. But I'm not really into it. Orb of Dragon Kind. 1 mana tap, add 2 mana in any combination of colors. Spend this mana only to cast dragon spells or activate abilities of dragons. One red sa sacrifice. Look at the top seven. You may reveal a dragon card from among them. I think if you have three dragons, this card's probably fine. If you don't, don't play it. This is probably a three. Maybe you have to have four dragons. Yeah, it's put into hand. It like, it like impulses for a dragon or cast a dragon a turn early. Maybe it's a two. Maybe it's Maybe it's just worse than a land. It's not good, I'll tell you that. I can imagine playing a three-color deck that has three different dragons and you play this card, like a, like a Grixis deck. If you're a Grixis deck that has the red dragon the, and the black dragon, the red dragon and the black dragon, and maybe the, yeah, the blue, some other dragon that you can cast with it. Maybe. Pretty unlikely, though. Wish. You may play a card you own from outside the game. This, this card seems pretty bad. I don't think you should play it. I don't know how it's going to set up on Arena or MTGO and digital platforms where you, you obviously you want to have lands in your sideboard to go grab, right? I don't know if you have to add them beforehand. You probably do. But adding three mana to any card you're not playing in your main deck and you still have to pay the mana cost. No thanks. You're 45% to hit with three dragons in deck. Well, Kitakami, it's... It's kind of weird, right? Because you would basically only activate it if you didn't already have one, right? 
So it's more like, you know, th you have three dragons in your top 27 cards or something. A little bit, it's a little bit, it's a little bit higher than that. You would only activate it if you could actually hit things, but I agree with you, it's not, it's probably not. You might need four dragons. If you would create one or more wishes mana fixing, no, because you have to have already not played a land. This isn't mana fixing at all. If it was actually ramp, maybe. But if you would create one or more treasure tokens, instead of create three or treasure tokens, an additional. So if I were to create two treasure tokens, it makes three. If I were to make four, it makes five. It doesn't double them. This feels like a non-common or a common to me, but it's weird that it's a rare. The card seems pretty medium minus. I don't, I don't even know what it would take for me to play this card. No idea. I don't think I'm ever gonna play that card. Five cost, seven three trample. Whenever Zalto Fire Giant Duke is dealt damage, venture into the dungeon. Yikes. Five mana, seven three trample. When it dies, you venture. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could technically ping it with Magic Massile. Ma magic Massile. Magic Missile for one, I guess. To enrage it yourself. I'm not impressed. It's whatever. It's mopey. That's good. You're gonna. I mean, you're, you're gonna play it. It's just. It's mopey. Flame skull. Flying flame skull cannot block. I like the stat line. Three mana, three one flying can't block. I like it. Rejuvenation. Whenever it dies, exile it. Okay. If you do, exile the top card of your library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play one of those cards. If you cast Flame Skull this way, you can't play the other card and vice versa. Okay, that's a cool ability. This is a cool card. It's also, it's also a skeleton. So there's a skeleton lord in the set too. This is a cool card. Yeah, it's a cool phoenix. This is, this is good. Yeah, this is really good. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting card. Six mana, six six flying haste. Okay. One red. Inferno of the Star Rounds gets plus an O. When its power becomes twenty this way, digital twenty to any target. <laughs> okay. Okay. So if you're not familiar, there was a card in the past called Rorix Blade Winning. Rorix. This was like a constructed and limited all star. Rorix Blade Wing, six minutes, six five haste. This fellow is a lot better than that. He also can't be countered. This is just a nine. At the end of the day, it is just a critter that just dies. But it not being being able to be countered is pretty awesome. There are two counter spells in the set, right? Two or three. I think there's two. Might be more. That might be a gold one. There's two common counter spells that I get this that this gets around, and it has fire breathing too. The only thing it's missing is trample. Yeah, poor Shiv and Dragon. So much better than Shiv and Dragon. Better in every way than Shiv and Dragon. Oh, you just need a few ogres and you're good to go. Oh yeah, dude. You're talking about hoarding ogre. I just gotta roll like. Seven natural twenties, man. Got give me my twenty-one treasures. So I attack with hoarding ogre seven times. They're at negative one, and I use my my six mountains to ta to activate my inferno. <laughs> oh, I, I don't have the puppet twenty times. It just has to have twenty power. Oh, okay. So like, I attack with I gotta attack with my hoarding ogre like six times. All right. There you go. Yeah, six or seven times. Yeah, it's easy. Easy. Who needs to attack to win? 20 ball to face. I also have Zorn in play. To get more treasures. Alright, Zariel, Archduke of Avernus. Plus one, creatures you control get plus one and gain haste until the turn. That's not a good look. Zero, create a zero, one red red double token that when it dies, it deals on it. Okay. Minus six, you get an emblem at the end of your first combat phase, you untap target creature you control. After this phase, there is an additional. 
Yikes. Meteor Storm is a 9. It's just a Terminate. It's a 2 for 1 Terminate. That's all Meteor Storm is. Also hard to cast, so. And this card is not a good pedigree. You know why? Let me tell you why. <laughs> you know why I cringed? Why I cringed when I read the first line? Not a good pedigree. Uh, where is it? This fellow. This Sarkin was so bad. And it gave plus one, plus one. Ugh. Not a good look. Yeah, this, this fellow is... This fellow is just whatever. I mean, you play it. You play it. But it's a whatever card. Yeah. Yeah, the devil tokens are good, for sure. Um... Yeah, this, this T-Bolt fellow. But it's better than that that elf from the previous set. Because let me tell you, that elf was probably the worst Planeswalker I have ever seen. Tavar Kel. This is, this is why I, I also kind of cringed. That this, was, this was in the previous set. It was in, oh, it was in Kaldheim, right? And this was among the worst cards I've ever had the displeasure of playing with. And so... So I look at Zariel and it's like, oh my goodness, you remind- you remind me- you're reminding me of Tivar Kel. I don't know if I wanna- I don't know if I wanna even look at you. Yeah, it reminds me of the Sarkin, it reminds me of Tivar Kel. And it's just like, these are not good things to be reminding me of. They're among the worst trains walkers ever made. So, th this is a yikes. And the, the emblem is whatever. So, I don't even... I mean, you play it, it's just, it's whatever. Oh, I'm happy about Planeswalkers being worse. I'm not complaining. Be aware that I'm not complaining that Planeswalkers are bad. I hate losing to them all the time in sealed and limited and drafts, whatever. I oh, know, I'm sorry I said the D word. But looking at red, lo red looks like it's pretty aggro. Um, it doesn't have access to venture like other colors do, but instead it's just it's just hard hitting and tight fitting. Like it has dragon's fire, which might be the the most efficient removal in the format. Um, and it has two mana three one first strikes and gotten hoardling hobgoblin captain, and it has hoarding ogre, which is just. Whew. Whew. That's quite an on-hit effect. That's quite like an on-attack effect, I should say. And it actually, like... I like this Earth Cult Elemental. I know people in my chat didn't like it, but... I feel like if you if you treasure this out off a of Hoarding Ogre, I feel like making your opponent sack a land can be, like, pretty awesome. Especially if you have a 6-6 six -six to get it on. Um... Yeah, like red normally does not get six mana six sixes, so this is six mana six mixes, but I, I think is an upside. Uh, yeah, red looks really aggro. Which, and so I think you're gonna, like red black looks like the type of thing that you're gonna be venturing into the Tomb of Annihilation. So your opponent's gonna be at like 15 life. And you're gonna get a death touch token that you can give trample with your goblin morning star. Right? To just finish like it seems like red has just had like a ton of burn to the face. Like it has red dragon, which just <sighs> your your opponent's head just explodes. I know this card looks really mopey. I promise you. I promise you this card is fantastic. <laughs> it looks so mopey. So basic, it's really good. And improvised weaponry is going to be really fun to play with for sure. And the cool, another cool thing with red is there's so much treasure making that you can easily splash the best two cards of of other colors, which other colors seem to not have as much treasure making as red does at common. So no matter what, if you're playing red, I think you're playing three colors. So you get to play like your best two rares from colors that are not your two primaries. So that's another big big bonus for red. 
it seems like red has a lot of like on hit like if i on tap and attack you're just dead like it has delina it has red dragon it has this this hoarding ogre it has this like battle cry goblin that if you don't kill this thing just murders you chaos channeler good lord if i play chaos channeler i can attack like i don't imagine losing that game ever i think i just think red is i red not having venture makes it so like gosh, gosh enemy being at like 15 life from tomb of annihilation is so crazy like if you if you pair red with either black or white which has a lot of venturing and there's so much burn in red it's gonna be interesting to see